Uh, Chow, you uh, had probably the harshest words for Trump. You called him ignorant, stubborn, and unpredictable. <laughs> uh, I don't think I have to ask what you meant by that. I can probably <laughs> figure it out. But um, let me just play it against the, the current talks going on between China and uh, the United States. Mr. Trump over the weekend said a big deal has just, it's huge, a huge deal has just been reached um, with China. Uh, but you've got some more insight into exactly how big that deal was, right? Yeah. Or is. I, yeah, I want to start talking about the, the so-called mini deal uh, just reached uh, several days ago, as you uh, point out. Uh, Mr. Trump claim is a substantial or big deal. But please remember, just one or two weeks ago, uh, he strongly claimed he want comprehensive deal, not partial deal. Everybody know that. But why suddenly change? I, I guess from his perspective, I, I guess it's uh, uh, not difficult to understand. <coughs> His final goal is to be re-elected in 2020. That's his personal final goal. Mm -hmm. Support his goal, there are the two considerations. First one, he wants to solidify his base in Middle East. That's best way is China by criticize strong to China. Second consideration is keep US economy from be weakened from recession. So you look at all of his action, just swing between these two considerations. Sometimes first consideration prevail. Sometimes second consideration prevail. This time, second consideration prevail. Why? You look at the figure. Now US economy started to weakening, particularly in manufacture, uh, lots of data show that. So that case in the deal, so-called deal, China agreed to purchase annually 40 to 50 billion US agricultural products, which give Trump good reason or excuse he can claim he obtained the victory, particularly to his base. But, but he did not get any concessions, major concessions from China, or at least uh, so far we, well, let's just let. We'll let no, no, well, sure, but yeah. I'd like to interject yeah. something on yeah. one of the things he said. Yeah, go ahead. He did, did China make any major concessions as part of this deal? Uh, I, I don't think so. You know, uh, Premier Liu He, I guess uh, in several months ago, uh, he claimed China uh, has uh, three core concerns during the, the trade war. First one is if the deal done, all of the tariff increase have to be removed. <coughs> That's the first one. Second one is uh, increased purchase from US export have to be reasonable, rational. Third one is the text of the agreement have to be well balanced without holding sovereignty of China or dignity of China. The last one is more controversial. It's more complicated. So in this deal, of course, China didn't give up his call, the last one call concert, because that's the part of partial deal, not all of deal. So I guess both sides uh, do maybe a little bit step forward to have kind of compromising. Of course, I read some social media in China. Some corner of China feel they're unhappy with the deal. They ask, what benefit for China? China, even without deal, they agree to purchase more agricultural product from US. Only US agree to postpone uh, increase from a tariff from 25% to 30%. Also during the meeting in White House, uh, rather wiser to chap in by saying, December 15, whether increase or not increase, have not decided. Obviously, U.S. still try to use the tariff as a weapon to continue push China. John Claude, what were you going to say? No, I wanted to say uh, three things. Uh, <coughs> one, when you say that uh, manufacturing is weakening, this is true in certain states. Now, remember, manufacturing is a very low component of the GDP in the United States, which yeah. is an economy largely based on services. So it's relevant in as much as it is in a state 
that's considered to be a swing state. If it's in uh, Michigan, if it's in North Carolina, or if it's in Wisconsin, Trump will care about. At the same time, you can't say that the economy is weakening because it has been acknowledged, published very recently, the employment figure have never been so good in 50 years. And this is not what the administration says, this is the official statistics. We had the lowest unemployment that we've had in 50 years. And that's what matters at the end of the day. And in the relationship with China, I agree with you that Trump once said, I want a big deal, and he will settle for anything that will help his re-election. So I think we all agree on that. I think we got it loud and clear. He's not hiding it in any way, shape, or form. But the real issue are, as we well know, in the relationship with China, which are real, and Trump is raised these issues, but he's not prepared to deal with them because he's, he knows that he's, he can't deal with them in a relatively short period of time, and that that's not going to help his re-election. This is uh, intellectual property. This is the uh, market access, to, to mention too. This is uh, unbalanced uh, transfer of technology. And I mean, we can name it, so we know what these issues are. That's not going to change. But what matters is that if he gets a small deal, and he can say, as I said before, with the milk producer in Wisconsin, look, I get you 5% more, that may shift some electoral votes, and that's all he cares about. I mean, he's not trying to uh, resolve the fundamental problem of the economy and the society in, in the US. He wants to get reelected. Mm. Just let me ask a question, if I may. If we were two broadcasters commenting on a football game, who won this game? I can either. Nobody win, nobody lose for many, for many years. I That's think my, it sounds my like China won to me, no? Uh, yeah, I guess different people have different uh, views. Why China agreed to do that? I guess two points. One is the way doing that is gradualism, which is the core Chinese philosophy. China understand it's hard to make a comprehensive deal in short term, but gradually to reach someone which will create environment to be uh, promote the further uh, negotiation. One thing I want to point, in the trade war, China is on the defensive. That's very important. Also, you look at all of the fact. You Chinese mean on the defensive government, in the sense that, they, that it was started by the United States? Uh, yes. Also, one thing I should remind, I feel very sorry, not many foreign mention that. Yes, many criticism to Mr. Xi Jinping. Yes, yesterday lunch, Kevin said that. But, Xi Jinping say one word, not very mentioned by many people, particularly in Western. He say, we have 1,000 reasons to be have good, re good relation with US. No single reason has a worse relation with US. That's very important. So general feeling is China wants to make some compromise. That's the first point. The second point, China wants to buy more time. Why? Let high tech company to find some components made non US mm -hmm. for export. Let them find more other markets. As, as we heard in the high tech panel yesterday. That's yeah. The, also, yeah. want to keep falling FDI stay as long as possible in China. Mm -hmm. They don't want to decope. Also, from the survey of American Chamber in Shanghai, so far, also I talked with my friend with that. Not many American companies have already started to move out. They keep hold because the cost of moving out is tremendous. But if the trade war stays longer, maybe some of them have to move out. Mm -hmm.